Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is so awesome to be with you uh, as we begin a new month. As we are uh, beginning June, we are continuing to make our way through 1 John, and we are just so thankful that you are joining us, that this is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice, we're glad in it, and we're just so happy to gather together to worship, uh, to dig into God's Word, as well as to just continue to grow with each other but ultimately in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm super excited, super thankful that you are here. If you're watching later in the day, we just want to say thank you for taking time to set aside to be in the Word of God and to continue to grow in your faith and in your discipleship with Jesus. So good morning, everybody. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a good start to a new month, to a new month of June 2022. So today we are going to finish up 1 John chapter 2. Now I've only got two verses to talk about, so we're going to start at 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 28. And so we're only going to look at verses 28 and 29, but there's a lot to unpack in these two verses. So that's what we're going to dig into this morning. That's what we're, our devotion is going to be about. But my question for you this morning has to do with June. Do you have any big projects that you're looking forward to doing this summer. Maybe you've already started. Maybe you've got a list of things that you'd like to accomplish before summer is over. So do you have anything on your summer to-do list? So if you do, let us know in the comments. Uh, share with everybody what you've got going on this summer, uh, what plans you have going on this summer. And as you do that, we are going to start at verse 28 in 1 John 2. So let's take a look at that together. And now, dear children, continue in him, him being Jesus, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. So again, John is using that language of children. He's using that language of they're not biologically his children, but what is he doing? He is basically, he is a spiritual mentor. He is a spiritual coach. So he's calling the people that he's writing to, children. Maybe they're new in their faith. Maybe they're, uh, maybe they're new to the faith and they're kind of just starting out. Maybe they're trying to get to a certain point. But John looks at them as little children as a place of spiritual mentorship and spiritual leadership. So as he calls his audience little children, it's a sign of respect and it's a sign of the relationship that John sees the, his audience and it's also a reflection of how Jesus sees you and me. We are all children of God. So John, using that language to show the connection that ultimately Jesus has with you and with me. Continue in him. Continue to fulfill his call. Continue to do the things that God is putting in your life on your plate to do so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. So scripture is very clear that Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, it's not going to be like he did the first time where he was humbly born of a virgin. When he comes back, he's going to come back in his full power and his full glory. And the thing is, nobody knows when that's going to happen. Nobody this side of heaven knows when that day is. So what are we to do in the meantime? We're to continue to fulfill the commandments, to love God with everything we've got, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, to do the things that God has placed in our lives to ultimately love our neighbors and to bring glory, honor, and praise to him. So John is saying, keep doing what you're doing. Keep preaching the word. Keep living lives of faithful love and service to him and to each other so that we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. When Jesus comes back as Christians... We don't need to be afraid of that. We don't need to be afraid of when Jesus comes back because those who have faith in him, we know that we know where that faith leads and that leads to being with Jesus in paradise forever. Now, the idea of Jesus coming back, maybe wherever you're at, that can instill a little bit of fear that can instill a little bit of caution or anxiety in our hearts. But ultimately, we don't have to be afraid, nor should we. Because when Jesus comes back, he's going to remake everything. And those who have faith in him, 
are going to go be with him in paradise forever. So as Christians, we really don't need to be afraid of when he comes back. Instead, we get to rejoice and say, you know what, when he does come back, I know because of what he has done, I know where I'm going to be. I know what the fruit of what his work has done for me is going to lead and produce, and that is life, eternal salvation. That's what it's going to bring. So we don't need to be ashamed. We don't need to be afraid of when Jesus comes back. Okay, so let's look at verse 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Everyone who does what is right has been born of him. When we first read that, it may seem like we need to do good works or that we need to do good things to prove that we are born of the Spirit, that we have a new life and a new purpose and we are a new creation in Him. Now, when we read that initially, it may seem like there is a works-based salvation. That is not what John is saying and that's not what Scripture says. Scripture is very clear about we do nothing to earn our way. We do nothing to earn our salvation. It's not about the works that we are able to do to earn salvation or to earn uh, brownie points before God. Basically, what John is saying here in this moment is it's not that our works equal salvation or that we merit salvation by our works. It's our works are a product of salvation. It's not works equals faith. It's works are a result of faith. For those of us who believe in Jesus, who call on him as Lord and Savior, Christians around the world, because of that faith, because of that freedom that we have in the gospel and in the salvation that Jesus earned for us, we are able to do good works. We're able to help the hungry. We're able to love those in our communities. We're able to partner with those to make a difference in the lives of other people. One of my uh, very respected faith influencers, a professor at Concordia Seminary, he put it like this, God does not need your good works. He doesn't need your good works to show that you're worth saving. You're worth saving because Jesus went to the cross and died for you. That's where we find our worth. That's where you find your worth. Your worth is in the blood of Jesus who went to the cross, suffered on our behalf, and rose to give us victory. God doesn't need our good works. But those in our community, those in our homes, our family, our friends, our coworkers, whoever is in your community, they need your good works. So for us as Christians, for us who, have, who know that he is righteous, who know that Jesus is Lord of lords and King of kings, we know that we get to do incredible things. We get to love and serve others, not for our own glory, but to bring the glory of Jesus. And by our actions, maybe... Maybe the Spirit is working through you in your works and wherever you are, whatever circumstances you have, God is working through you. Maybe to plant those seeds of faith, to create faith in the lives of people who may not know Jesus yet, who maybe are curious, but when they see those good works, when they see Christians getting in their communities and serving and loving and putting the needs of others before themselves, that can be enough for somebody to say, wonder what this Jesus is really all about. So it's not that our works are necessary for salvation. It's that our works are a product. They flow out of the salvation that we have been given and have found in Jesus. And that's what John is getting at. He's saying to show the love of Jesus, to show people that you are children of the light, that you are redeemed by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep loving keep serving, keep showing God's love in every aspect of your lives. And that's the same call that he has for you and me. And that's the same call that God puts in our hearts to love him above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves, to keep working, to keep showing the love, even when it's hard, even when it's not the easiest thing to do, keep showing the love of Jesus, keep serving other people. And ultimately know that your victory is not found in you, or your works, it's found in the blood of Jesus who went to the cross and who breathed that first Easter breath in victory. That's where our victory comes from. And the love that God has given to us is shown and reflected 
in our actions as we continue to love and serve other people. So church, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. We rejoice. We are glad in it. And Lord, we are so thankful for the ultimate work that you did for us on our behalf by sending Jesus to the cross to suffer and to die in our place and ultimately to rise from the dead that very first Easter morning to give us the hope, the assured salvation that we have in you and the eternal life and the resurrection that we will share in you at that last day. Lord, we pray that until Jesus comes back, because nobody knows when that's going to happen, we pray that you would empower and embolden your church to love you above everything and to love our neighbors and our communities as we love ourselves, that you would be, that we would be your hands and feet in this world to bring about and show the love that you have given to all of us and that you have for the entire world. We pray all of this in your most holy and powerful name. And all God's people said, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, church. Don't forget to share this video to engage and reach out and connect other people to the Lord of life and creation, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We want to wish you a blessed Thursday, and we will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. sharp for our next devotion as we start 1 John chapter 3. Have a great day, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.